Hello boys and girls, John with Rock County Jet Ski, Watcon.com. Welcome to Watercraft Talk. On today's video, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about fuel, ethanol fuel specifically. And again, this was a recommendation of one of you viewers. Thank you for reaching out and I apologize. I did not make note of who it was. I'm sure you know who you are. Uh, somebody sent me a message and, and was asking about fuel and to talk about ethanol and the damages. And I'm gonna take it one step further and we're gonna do a little testing. I'm gonna show you how to test for ethanol fuel today. So this should be kind of fun and interesting, I hope. I'm not a fuel expert or an ethanol expert by any means. I'm just a jet ski mechanic and I'm gonna tell you what we see here in the shop and, and why I strongly recommend not running ethanol fuel. So we'll, we'll start with a test here, I guess. First, I have this little vial. Um, we sell these on the website. I don't have this exact one, but we do have ethanol testers on the website. Sorry. Uh, and with that, uh, you can order online. And, uh, uh, but well, this is the one I use here in the shop. And honestly, you can even just use a, a water bottle or something um, like that. Uh, it's, it's really pretty simple. I, I fill this with, this is water I have in there now. You fill to that fill line with water. And then we're gonna add, I'm gonna just excuse me here for a minute, Chris. I'm gonna turn my, my phone down. I forgot to do that. Uh, sorry if you guys are trying to call. Um, I'm going to add fuel and you shake it up and we will see what it does. So you take the top off. I have my, my little canister here, the blue one. This is ethanol fuel. So we're going to start with this and I'm, I'm going to just warn you, I know I'm going to spill this all over. <clears throat> so pour that in. And you want to fill it. This one, I think it says fill gasoline. I fill it up to about the, the crown of the jar there. Then that's, that's fine. We'll wipe up our mess. Nothing like a little gas all over. So now we have gas and water in there and you shake it. And what happens is, is the ethanol will absorb the water. <clears throat> or the water absorbs it. Yeah, ethanol absorbs the water. I'm gonna get my terminology correct out there for all you guys that like correcting me. Um, and we'll see it, it's gonna, it's gonna settle in. And now the, the water, I'm sorry, the water absorbs the ethanol and it will increase. You'll see, you can already see the line here, how much higher the separation is. And maybe, well, here, if I lift it up, Chris, can you get on it at a straight angle and, and see? Do you have it? Can you, and if I tilt it, it's not going to, I can't see what you're seeing in the, in the camera, so sorry. But I'm hoping, you can je definitely see that the line here is where I had it filled up with water, and now the water has absorbed the ethanol, and it, and it has risen before it separates out. So you can definitely see that that is ethanol fuel. Um, the little container here has, that's showing to be about 10% if I hold it up correctly. It's between, it's a little more than 10% and I may have had a little strong, I might have been a little strong in the water, um, but it is, it is roughly 10% ethanol, maybe a little more, 15. Uh, I think the pump that I got this from this morning said it was up to 10% um, and I'm gonna take them at their word. So I'm gonna go dump this out just dump it in the parts tank. And we'll start again. I'm gonna go fill it back up with water. Sorry for the delay here. I'm back. Maybe Chris will put in some music there or something while we're doing that, right? So now my red cup, this is genuine pure gas. And again, I'm gonna do my best to pour that in there. This one is kind of hard to use because it is so small, but it works. So there, I'm gonna pour that in there. I'm gonna spill it all over my workbench again. No big deal, just cleaning it. 
And I don't remember, I'm sorry if I didn't show this. You can see the definite separation. You know, we got water, you got gas. Um, the water line should be, should be there. I'm gonna give it a shake. And if this truly is pure gas, it should separate right out and be clear and not, here, and I'll bring it, I'm, I'm sorry, Chris, I'm gonna bring it right over to the edge here so you can focus in on that a little better. And it takes a minute to settle down, but there should be a hard line that should separate right out. Gas does not mix with, real gas does not mix with water. And you can see it is settling right back down, right back to the water line. And there is our, you know, our 10%, 20% lines. And it is, it is right at the original, right at the original line. And if you leave that sit long enough, it will be a nice clear separation, no bubbles, no nothing. Um, and that is pure gas. So again, you could do this with a water bottle, just fill up a water bottle uh, or any clear bottle and, and put a line on it, fill it up with water, fill the rest of the way with gas, shake it, and, and if it is above the line, you have ethanol. So let's talk a little bit about what ethanol does, and I don't know how well this is going to come out on the camera. This is a Makuni carburetor diaphragm that I keep in my desk to show my local customers, and um, yeah, you can hear that. that. That thing, this thing is as hard as a potato chip. It is, it is rock hard. It does not bend. It does not move. It is very melted. Um, this is ethanol. This came out of a machine that had ethanol in the tank, 10% ethanol. This is the way this cover should look. It's flexible. It is rubbery. It is bendable. This, not. Um, ethanol destroys our, our internal, our carburetor parts. None of our carburetor parts are rated for any amount of ethanol. Um, diaphragms, check valves, needle and seat, the O-rings in your fuel select switch where you turn your gas on, off, and reserve will get hard and brittle um, from ethanol. Uh, fuel tanks, I, I thought I had a fuel tank here and, and I, I threw it away apparently. I had a fuel tank that, that cracked, it was all dry rod or dried out and it actually cracked and split open. It was in a customer's machine, it was a stand-up Maybe it was an X2, I don't remember. It was, a, it was a Kawasaki of some sort. It was either a 650SX or a X2, and the tank actually split. I've never seen that before, and the only thing I can attribute it to is ethanol. It had ethanol fuel in it, and the ski sat for a long time with a tank full of ethanol fuel. The tank cracked, all the fuel ran out, and went into the bottom of the hull. I, I have not seen that since or, or before. Again, I'm no ethanol expert, but that's the only thing that makes sense to me is I'm, I'm calling that ethanol. Um, I have heard of that in the marine industry with boats that have built-in tanks in the floor that they'll, they'll dry out and crack. Uh, so, and we see this all the time. We, we get customers' machines in that constantly that we're rebuilding carburetors and fuel lines and, and all kinds of problems that ethanol. Um, so if you can, stay away from ethanol gas. In our region here, we're in Wisconsin, and, and in our area, we're lucky enough that we have uh, recreational fuel. It's on the, it's on the pump, um, and uh, you can buy uh, non-ethanol recreational fuel. Typically, our ethanol here is, uh, or our non-ethanol is premium. Uh, 91 octane, premium fuel, non-ethanol. But not all non-ethanol is, or not all premium, I'm sorry, I gotta word this correctly, not all premium is non-ethanol, and, and there is some stations that have 87 octane um, non-ethanol. So uh, you can, you, you need to do some searching, I guess. And there's even a website, I think it's puregas.org, if I remember right, where you can put your zip code in and search for pure gas. Uh, another thing I, I talk about and that we learned over the years <clears throat> is a dedicated hose on the pump. A lot of the gas stations nowadays do not have a dedicated hose. So it's one hose and you push a button, one, two, three, for your fuel grade. Chances are the guy before you did not buy premium non-ethanol gas if it's a non-dedicated hose. That is as if it's one hose that feeds many different things. There's a valve somewhere under, underground that switches and um, you may very well get a gallon or two of ethanol fuel even though you paid for non-ethanol. So if you're only filling up a small tank, uh, I generally will put a few gallons in my truck first before I fill my gas tank. 
uh, unless it's a dedicated hose and you're certain that you're getting um, pure gas. So uh, I think I've rambled on enough about that. I hope you find that informative. Uh, please hit the, the, the subscribe button and like, take, share, and follow. As I always say, be nice to each other when you're out and about out there. The times are crazy. Um, keep good gas in your skis. Cannot say enough how important it is to have pure gas in your skis. I wish you luck, and the next time we'll see you out on the water. Hello, boys and girls. John with Rock County Jet Ski, Watcon.com. Welcome to Watercraft Talk. Blah. all that water. Sorry, there's one for you. <laughs> Stop. You're, like, you're, We're leaving freaking, the you're freaking laughing.